All right, Aaron Daly here, the Hitchhiker's Guide to Earth podcast number two. It is July 28th, Thursday, 2022, still, middle of it, hot as hell, oh my god. It's supposed to be in the hundreds today, I don't know if it actually is, I didn't check before I started this. It's kind of an impromptu decision to do it as usual, here by the river, the doggies enjoying the water behind me, because um, they need it as much as I do. <laughs> You see, London back there will just just does laps nonstop. He absolutely loves it. Athena's a little more standoffish, uh, but she's still hang out, <laughs> and she's doing much better. Oh, uh, yeah, like I guess it's been almost a week now since uh, Athena went chasing off a, after a deer, and I'm pretty sure I heard whatever happened happen. I heard her yelp off in the distance, and when she came back, she had a really bad limp. And I thought it was, like, her weird thing where she just starts wobbling around sometimes. But um, then I checked her paw closer. Um, couldn't find any signs of injury. Um, no punctures or even really any swelling. But if I touched this one spot by her toe on her right paw, um, she would yelp and pull away immediately. And she just she couldn't walk on it. She's better now. She's almost, almost completely... Well, she's pretty much fully healed. She limps still, but if a deer or a squirrel runs by, you wouldn't know it. In fact, this earlier this morning, she took off her and London after a deer. There's deer hanging around me all the time. <laughs> they bait. They come by my camp and bait my ducks. Uh, it's not like they don't know I'm here. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's a theory that people with a high vibration attract animals. Um, yeah that's true then I must have a very high vibration because their animals love hanging out by me <laughs> I see so many deer it's ridiculous um, there's bear passing by all the time they don't bother me they just pass by sometimes I have to rustle you know what I found out I was doing before to ward bears off was I was using a police siren app which is working pretty good but what I found out works even better and is way less noisier <laughs> and intrusive in the woods um, is to rustle branches in a tree that's, you know, a little bit above your head. Um, make it sound like something's crashing through it. And uh, that seems to really do the trick. <laughs> um, like, I'll have to play the siren sometimes for, like, up to, like, five minutes before they'll, like, finally get the message. But uh, the tree rustling thing seems to work very well. Um, if it was indeed a bear. I, I, I'm assuming it's a bear. Uh, based off of the sounds of the crashing, um, an occasional kind of groan that I'll hear sometimes, and the fact that my dogs don't go running off after it, but instead kind of hang by me and kind of whimper. Because <laughs> um, I don't usually see them, uh, at least when like I'm afraid that they're going to come to my camp. It's always late at night at, when it's dark and I can't see anything. Um, I did see one, actually, and I got that on video. It was awesome. Athena, come here now. Get over here. Get over here. Holy fuck. This is one of the... F I don't see bears out here usually, so this is pretty crazy. He's just sitting there eating the tree, I guess. Yeah, I was pretty excited about that. Bear and tree. So, let's see. But yeah, it's really hot. Um, have to come down to the river and go swimming every couple hours to stay cool. I have to do it. I'm forced to enjoy the river. <laughs> I just I keep saying it to like I I realized that yesterday as I was walking down here begrudgingly, <laughs> as I so often do. Like God damn it, because it. it and I realized the, the silliness of it on the one hand. I was like, gosh, she's like, why am I complaining about this? So many people would be like, what are, what are you complaining about? Oh, a poor guy has to go down to the river and swim every couple hours on a weekday. <laughs> poor guy. But it does interrupt me trying to get stuff done. Um, it stops me from doing things like well, it did until I realized, hey, I should just try and do the podcast down here. <laughs> or I have to come and hang hang out all the time anyway it makes such a difference though like seriously i come down to the river and i jump in for like not even like 30 seconds and i come out and if there's even the slightest breeze like i look like like i'm cold i'm freezing <laughs> um 
So, and it's great too, so you get that kind of that ice ice cold water rush with your brain and the endorphins and everything, as you can tell. Um, clearly, I have gone into the water before. <laughs> I should put an opening video. I don't know if I've done it or not. We'll see. You'll know if I. Have. I did another, I'm into Instagram videos now. When you don't let people disrespect you, they will start calling you difficult. But I'd rather be hard to deal with and easy to manipulate. Good morning, my neighbors! Fuck you! Yes! Yes! Fuck you too! Well, turns out every once in a while, someone amazing comes into your life, so here the fuck I am. I don't really give a fuck. I really don't give a fuck. I'm, I was, I've been kind of edging, edging it. <laughs> Maybe that's the wrong term, <laughs> but whatever. Edging into it <laughs> a little bit at a time. Um, you notice that every now and then I'll pop something out, just kind of trying it. Um, but I'm, I'm on a roll now where I've been doing one every day. I've been trying to find a theme to promote my brand with, um, the Fudashi brand. Fudashi, which means fuck that shit, or Fudashi. Fudashi. I don't even know how to pronounce it myself, but it's in my mind an urban slang for fuck that shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like it. Um, and I, I, I've been, but I've been struggling to find a way to, to, to market that in a kind of positive way because I'm not like, you know, I'm not really like clearly not like a terribly angry person, though you wouldn't know it from my tweets. <laughs> I smile a lot and. and yeah, it's, it's, I'm a complex, I'm very complicated, very complicated. Uh, I guess it's just because when I'm making videos, it makes me happy. I like to perform. I've always liked to perform. When I was a little kid, I used to like do impromptu tap dance shows for the elderly <laughs> in random places just for fun. That kind of, I, I like making people happy. I should have been a stand-up comedian. Maybe I still will be. Keep seeing these old guys popping up doing stand up and they're hilarious. It's like, I could be one of those old guys. I'm not that old yet, but I'm getting there. You know, they say, uh, they say, I heard on the Joe Rogan show yesterday. So, not to, not to discredit him in any way. Like, this is the best information you can get in the, about the world today is on the Joe Rogan show. And if you don't know that, my God, you are missing out terribly on life. Um, yeah, it's it's a great resource, not just because of it's less about Joe Rogan and more about the people that he's interested in and brings on the show and exposes you to uh, that you would otherwise never have heard of. And like people like Lex Friedman, and it's a rabbit hole too, because he's introduced me to people like Lex Friedman, who does the same thing. He interviews people that you would otherwise never have heard of. And he's really, but he really focuses on like sciences, scientists. Um, so like really, really super smart, crazy smart people. Um, and it makes me happy cause I can listen to them and, and I get what they're saying. <laughs> and I've always prided myself as rather intelligent. So <laughs> pat on the back end, you're pretty much as smart as you think you are. At least when you listen to podcasts and no one's there to challenge you. I have to get to a real debate with one of them, I suppose, to really understand or to know for sure, which I would love to do. I want to get, I want to be on the Lex Friedman podcast. I want to be on the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> I don't know if I'm interesting. I probably not. I don't know. I've had a very interesting life and it's about to quite likely get much more interesting. Um, as I am once again in my mind going to Mexico, a uh, very good friend of mine that I traveled with that I met in India, who's actually from Norway, um, is down there and he's, been asking me to come down there for the last year <laughs> and I keep telling him that I want to uh, because I do <laughs> I really do um, and the only thing that's stopping me is the fact that I have two dogs and I've got this block in my head that says two dogs and is a bad idea to try to travel with and an even worse idea to try and bring to Mexico <laughs> um, and I can't fathom li living without them because they're my only family and I've got a traumatic history of dogs in my past that I've had to let go of and didn't want to going all the way back to when I was a kid. Um, I had this dog when I was 15 years old named MacGyver. 
and he was aptly named because he could not be contained. He could get out of anything, no matter what it was, including those screw down dog posts and barns and anything. It's just he, nothing would hold him. Uh, scrappy little mutt. And not too, maybe a year into having him or so, uh, park ranger brought him back to us, uh, saying he would found him w- with a uh, young deer or fawn in his mouth. He hadn't killed it, and he said that's why he didn't shoot it. It's like, whoa, gee whiz, thanks. An animal tried to kill another animal. <laughs> that's illegal, by the way. It's illegal for your dog to kill a deer. Um, I guess because the hunters could say, oh, my dog just did it. I didn't ask him to. But in our case, it was like totally, like I never had taken my dog hunting or given it any suggestions that it should hunt for deer. It just did it. And I thought when I was a kid, it's when I was 15, I was like, this is the coolest thing I ever heard. My dog's being punished for it. And, you know, he, <laughs> he brought it back to us, but he's just like, you know, I'm just doing this out of courtesy, but you know, you're going to have to get rid of it. And so I was forced to let that dog be put down. Um, <laughs> one of several strikes against my parents and trusting them. Uh, and so that's a, yeah. Oof. I've been struggled to be in a positive place, a positive enough to talk and do a podcast just because had kind of a falling out, say self induced kind of a band aid ripping off kind of session. I don't know. I hardly ever hear from my, I don't hear from my parents and I rarely hear from my sisters and I, my sister just popped up out of nowhere with some bullshit comment about one of my posts on TikTok. <laughs> I was like, and like, she just said the wrong thing. <laughs> and it was a thing that made her, you know, clearly siding with my parents, which are to this day unapologetic about their raising me because they are still Jehovah's Witnesses, which is a doomsday cult. It's how I was raised from birth. Um, and that's a whole other... Yeah, I talk about it every now and then because it, it's a struggle. I'm 47 now. I got out when I was 21. I mean, I was deep. My parents were... My dad was an elder. My mom pioneered. We live in a small rural town in upstate New York. And I was... My parents were super strict. Um, and that religion was my life. Like, that, every day of the week was spent doing something involving that religion. Studying for meetings or going to meetings or studying and going to meetings or going out in service or going to quick builds or going to district assemblies or preparing our own talks or... <laughs> like, we used to do plays and... The only like parties I ever went to were parties with other Jehovah's Witnesses. They would have get-togethers. Um, I couldn't celebrate birthdays. I couldn't. I, I couldn't participate in sports. I was told I wasn't going to college because my entire life growing up, my parents were telling me, and my entire environment, everyone I knew was telling me that Armageddon was coming literally any day, and everybody was going to be wiped out who wasn't a Jehovah's Witness. Oh, and that's not an exaggeration. That was, I just, (laughs) I have so many memories and conversations listening to the adults talk about it and how it's coming any second now. And we've got to do our best to be good Jehovah's Witnesses and praise Jehovah and tell all the rest of the people in the world about it, you know, because we got to save them. It wouldn't be right to pray and hope and pray for the destruction of all mankind without warning them. (laughs) That's how they justify it in their minds. Um, Because that's what they do. They literally, we would hope, we prayed Every night, multiple times a day, you know, you would pray before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner, before you went to bed. If you went to meetings, they had prayer before the meeting, in the middle of the meeting, at the end of the meeting. Oh, wait, no, no, no. They only had prayer at the beginning and the end. They would sometimes have songs in the middle, and they always had songs at the beginning and the end. I mean, dude, it's totally all-encompassing, fully immersive doomsday cult. Totally focused on the end of the world, hoping and praying for it every day. God, please bring the end of the world so that we may enjoy life in a perfect paradise and live in the houses of all the people who you just killed. <laughs> not even kidding, dude. In what's not so many words, and sometimes in so many words, depending on who was giving the prayer. <laughs> it's psychotic, right? <laughs> Like, how is that in any way contributing to anything positive? To preach and, and plan for the destruction of everything and everyone and to place no stock whatsoever in your own personal well-being, financial stability, let alone that of the rest of the world in the place where you currently live now. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. You know, and you get out of that, and then you find out that everybody else on the planet, to one degree or another, is involved in their own version of that same kind of bullshit. Whether it's another kind of religion, or it's a government, or it's an education system, or it's a... I don't know. 
I can't even think about it. <laughs> so yeah. Whoo! Wah wah! Unbelievable. Ugh. So yeah. <laughs> I don't even know why I started talking about this. Something about going to Mexico and not being able to bring my dogs, or why my dogs are my only family, or something like that. I don't know. But this guy that wants me to come down to Mexico is a lot like family. It's like a brother. Like in the sense that we, well, we shared some of like the most amazing times in our lives, life together in India. And on top of which, we're just like totally synced up mentally. If you believe in astrology and that kind of thing, it makes sense to you because we're like a, one day apart on birthdays. Just, you know, very emotional, very still logically, very observant, astute, aware people. Um, and yeah, it'd be good to be around somebody who gets me really. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot to be done down there. And then there's this other project that I've run into, something called the Eden Alliance. Um, and they want me to come also to Mexico. Um, so I get, I'm still checking it out. It seems pretty legit, though. Um, and very interesting. Just people trying to build a new, like, kind of self-sufficient community. But not like, you know, going back to the Stone Age, like modern, using modern technology with vertical gardens and sustainable energy and all those kinds of things. And, you know, just in the sense that like if the systems that everyone is, you know, feeding at the Tidda should go under all of a sudden, we're not all just left hang out, hung out to dry. Stark reality is that, you know, all governments come and go. Um, but the upside is that, is that they're not as, cat, the, the ending of a, of a, government order isn't doesn't have to be <laughs> that you know socially damaging or cataclysmic for the rest of us um in the sense that i mean government just kind of <laughs> organizes things supposedly on paper for the betterment of all humankind but they don't really actually do any of the things we need to survive we do those things uh they just tell us when we can do it where we can do it how much of it we can do and who we're allowed to give it to and get it from. <laughs> they just control every single aspect of what we do without actually contributing to doing it. <laughs> so, you know, they're kind of like a parasite. <laughs> uh, that's government, in my mind. It's a parasitic entity uh, that exists for its own perpetuation. Because <laughs> uh, governments never, if you ever notice any, any government that ever gets full control, uh, once they get that control, they screw it up catastrophically <laughs> that society implodes it happens to the egyptians it happened to the romans it happened to uh alexander the great it happened to the british most recently it's happened to the chinese repeatedly it's happening to us right now i mean it's just duh you know and i think we got to figure out how to get past this concept we got to get over this brainwashed brainwashing that we've all been infected with that we need a government in order to survive um we need organization we need cooperation <laughs> we don't need a bunch of people who don't know us and who we don't know telling us how to live our lives we don't need that and we sure as hell don't need them building up massive militaries and constantly dragging us normal people into wars with each other to kill each other and destroy and rape and steal and fuck everything up and then cry about how we need them to fix all the messes they just made. Like, that's government. That's what it does. It's just this giant machine of destruction and then crying about how we need them to fix the f everything they just fucked up. <laughs> and I challenge any scholar from any university or any think tank to argue differently. I would gladly debate you publicly and openly. I invite it. Come and get me. <laughs> Seriously. And I'd be friendly about it, too. You know? Like, I have respect where it's due. <laughs> if you're going to be an intentional, ignorant piece of crap, though, I am going to tell you. <laughs> Just look at my brand. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I'm solid with that. That feels good. <laughs> I just got to get back into the habit of doing these things. Um, you know, I, this podcast is going to be all kinds of things. If I keep doing it, eventually, you know, I, like others, will get people to, on my podcast and interview them. And I will no doubt be traveling somewhere because I don't want to be here anymore. And I'm just, like, getting that close. It's too hot to travel, try and travel with dogs right now. If I had my own van, 
I'd be gone already. That <laughs> van, and all my stuff would be in it, and we'd be like, Poo! See you later. On the road, traveling slowly on our way to Mexico, because I can't, don't need to be down there for another three months or so. Um, so that's why it'd be great to sell some hoodies and some t-shirts. <laughs> Enough to buy a van, that would be fantastic. I would need to sell at least... With the profit of, I get, if I could sell 100 items, 100 hoodies, 100 t-shirts, either one of those things, that would be enough to get something that runs and could get me there. Because I've gotten a van for $1,000 or less, twice. I got one for $1,000 and one for $600. And they both carried me up one side of the country and down the other. <laughs> Uh, well, one got me from from San Francisco to, where did we break down? New Mexico. From San Francisco to almost Albuquerque, New Mexico. And then the other one got me from Albuquerque, New Mexico, all the way up to where I am now. Uh, and it would have kept going, but the police took it from me because they're assholes. <laughs> There's no better way, easier way to put it. They're fucking dickheads. They took my home and my transportation and stranded me here eight years ago. And because of my mental situation and the fact that I have a dog now. The only reason I got a dog was because I got a van. <laughs> I was like, I have to have somewhere for the dog to be and stay while I do things that humans do that dogs can't. Like, that's just a, a need if you're going to have a dog and also be participate in society and not just be some homeless piece of shit. <laughs> Which is not what I want to be. I would like to participate, but god damn it, society, you make it fucking hard. <laughs> really. Okay, I need my dogs. I wish I didn't need my dogs, but, you know, you allow for freedom of religion, which is kind of a good thing, except it allows for fuck-ups like my parents to make fuck-ups like me, and now I need my dogs. <laughs> I'll elaborate on that, or you could just watch past videos where I already have. Have a lovely day.